praise god brothers and sisters welcome to faith ministries uh where we're walking by faith especially in these times and uh not by sight today is sunday july 19th 2020 and it's also our last day fasting and praying to war against the cycle of defeat that might be present in our lives or in the lives of our loved ones and family members the focus of today's fast is guilty but discharged so we are going to be using as a focal prayer point a couple of bible verses that i'll also put in the link below but the first one would be uh john 14 verses 30 where jesus said to his disciples for i will not speak much with you soon for the prince of the world cometh but he has nothing on me pretty much so here jesus was telling his disciples that a time was coming when he wouldn't be with them any longer because of course he was going to be crucified and the prince of the world satan was coming to execute that mission but satan had nothing on jesus so we are going to meditate on that today as uh, one of our bible verses that we shall focus on um because we too by the blood of jesus christ we are guilty we're not like jesus because jesus was blameless he was sinless so the enemy had nothing to accuse him of right and we know that the enemy satan is referred to in the bible as the accuser of the brethren so that's what he does he accuses people before god day and night but we praise the lord that jesus christ is there sitting at the right hand of the father always interceding on our behalf and always just playing the part of our lawyer so to speak and so we too are righteous but not because we are sinless or blameless but because the blood of jesus christ covers us from all unrighteousness essentially right so through the blood of jesus christ even though we are guilty we are discharged and so if this is really very important for us to know because when we go to God and when we seek deliverance and when we have been delivered, we have to be able to walk in our deliverance. We have to be able to have that faith that we have been delivered. But this is also a walk of faith, right? So the enemy is always going to come and try to do things to basically to accuse you, not only in front of God, but also to yourself in order to cause you to feel like your deliverance has not occurred and so what happens then is that when things like that happen and we begin to actually believe the words that the enemy is speaking to us we could very easily stumble and lose our deliverance so we want to remember as well that Proverbs 20, yeah, Proverbs 28, 13 does say that for whoever, he who covers his sins won't prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So we need to do what we did on day one, which is again, go before God, continue to confess our sins. But the clause here is that we need to also be able to forsake them. So you don't just confess your sin and go back to that lifestyle, right? So we've ask the lord for deliverance we've broken all the chains we've broken all the curses that have been spoken against us those word curses all ancestral covenants and generational curses we don't need to be going back to any of those things we don't need to be opening up our lives to for example um new age beliefs right so we don't want to be playing with tarot cards or or dealing with the occult because that would just open up a door for us to kind of for the enemy to come right back into our lives so we have to understand that whatever it is that we have prayed to god for and whatever things that we broke um on friday and continue to break yesterday those things are in the past they're gone by faith we have been delivered and so our job right now is to continue to confess our sins before god that we might have mercy before him but we also need to make every attempt and to ask the holy spirit to help us if you were dealing with an addiction and things like that you know sometimes you might have been delivered 
instantaneously and you no longer feel the need to drink or to take drugs or whatever it is or to watch porn sometimes you might find that even though you've prayed and and and, and been delivered from these things the edges will come we have to ask the holy spirit to give you the strength and the courage to overcome those urges because if that little door that the enemy opens for you to tempt you because again satan doesn't give up easily we've been told time and time again that we need to resist the devil and he will flee the very fact that we have to resist means that he is coming at us all the time all the time in, a, in an attempt to wear us out in an attempt to get us to feel we're defeated in an attempt to make us give in so we have to resist him and in resisting him he will eventually flee from us so he's a formidable opponent he's not someone or an entity that will try once twice three times and move on he's going to keep coming at you and coming at you and coming at you and so you have to be relentless in your pursuit of holiness and in your pursuit of a relationship with the holy spirit but you also have to have the courage to resist the enemy, to resist temptation from the enemy. And so I want to give you like two examples that might draw this whole point home, right? So we know that the enemy, let's say now you feel like you've been delivered, all is well, we're praising God and just in the mode of thanksgiving what's going to happen the enemy is going to want to pull you right back into where you used to be before so he's going to start to whisper things in your ear and so i want you to remember always that there is a battle for your mind because that's where most things happen in our mind and in our hearts and so the enemy knows that if he can get your mind and get you confused if he can manipulate things in such a way as to make you make the wrong choices based on what he has manipulated and I'll get to that in a bit then he's won you over and that's why the book of Romans tells us that we have to constantly be renewed in the spirit of our mind and to not entertain any negative thoughts um, or any negativity that might be and doubt fear and all those other things that might actually be inspired by Satan himself so you've gotten your deliverance you're feeling great about it things seem to be looking up and then you hear this voice start to say to you it might be a voice in your head or the devil might actually use people because he's very good at using people and these people may not even know that they're being used by satan to break you down mentally so now you hear in your mind you do something and you hear in your mind, you see, I told you, you weren't delivered at all. You had, I know some people have been praying in this three day fast over um, the issue of having spirit spouses and dream pollution. Okay. So now you prayed and, and were delivered. You believe you've been delivered. And then the very next day you have another dream pollution or um, you have an addiction to porn. You believe you've been delivered and then literally the next day you have a crazy urge to go and watch porn on the internet and things like that now the devil says to you you see you're not delivered nothing happened nothing has changed you're still the same old person that you used to be look at you pathetic still trying to watch porn still having those dream pollution still being visited by your spirit spouse that's the enemy whispering in your ear Okay. Now, does that mean that you were not delivered? Not necessarily, but the walk of deliverance is a walk of faith. And so you have to continue to walk in faith and believe that it is done. It is finished. It is no more. But the moment the devil begins to whisper doubt in your ear through your own things that you're hearing or through other people because again you might get into a spot maybe you had a spirit of anger before and you've been praying against the spirit of anger and you get into a spot with a loved one okay 
Now, you may not have been as angry as you used to be before, but you expressed yourself passionately. And then what does that person say to you? Oh, you're the same old person. Like, this is the issue I've had with you for, like, all these years that I've known you. Like, you're always so angry. You're always so bitter. You're always so this and that. You always have an attitude, blah, blah, blah. What's happening in that moment is that the enemy is trying to remind you of your past. And he's using a current situation to reel you back in. Are you human? Yes. You've begun your deliverance. Will you fall sometimes? Yes, you might fall sometimes. But the fact that you fell does not necessarily mean that you are the old person that you used to be. You know what I mean? And But the devil wants to paint this picture and manipulate the situation and whisper to you and condemn you and accuse you before yourself and tell you, you see, you haven't changed. Even, you know, your own husband thinks that you, you haven't changed at all. You've not grown at all because you've had this one incident where you lost your temper. You're the same old person. You haven't changed at all. You're never going to change. Or the enemy himself is whispering that in your ear. The thing is, you have two options. The first option is to actually believe what you're being told by the people that you love or by your own mind and say, you know what? Yeah, I don't think I was delivered. I haven't changed. If I had changed, I still wouldn't be doing this and that. Say if it was, and it's only been hours after your deliverance. But now you're being made to feel in by your own thoughts or through the words of people close to you. Because, and again, God, uh, Satan will always use people close to you because we love these people, we're vulnerable before them, and we tend to believe what they say to us about ourselves. And so now you're there sitting and you, you can either believe what you're being told, you've not changed, you're never going to change, this is who you are, or you could choose to walk in faith. And understand that even the process of sanctification is a process. The process of, you know, Jesus saved us and he redeemed us. But the walk that we have to walk with Christ is a walk. It's not even a flight. It's like a walk. And so some things that were in us that were so deeply ingrained in us may not. They may, they might be completely eradicated the moment we get our deliverance. For others and for some things, they, it might actually take a little bit of time. So what you need to do, your second option is to walk in faith and say, I reject in the name of Jesus Christ. I reject what Satan is offering to me right now in my mind or through the words of my loved one. I reject those thoughts. I reject that I am the old person that I was because I know that I'm a new creation in Christ. The old things have gone and the new things have come. So I reject those words that are coming out of his or her mouth. I reject the thoughts in my mind that are trying to pull me back into my past and remind me that there, no change has happened. So I hope that you will pick the latter choice, which is the choice to walk by faith. Understanding, even as uh, Proverbs 24, 16, I believe, says that a righteous man might fall seven times but he will always arise. And what that means is that when you begin to walk in righteousness, yes, you might stumble here and there. You might make mistakes here and there, but you always get up and continue to walk. So the world might see when you fall and say, oh, it's the same old person, no change at all. But you must get up. When you fall into that scene, when you fall into that situation that the enemy is using to trap you, get up, dust yourself up, and continue to walk. You fall again, get up, and do the same thing. Because that actually is the walk of faith. It's understanding that when I fall down, I'm not going to stay down and accept defeat and be a victim and say, I'm done. I can't be delivered. I can't be saved. I can't be loved. I just give up on myself. No, that's what the enemy, that's what Satan wants you to do is to give up, is to, to make peace with your situation and make peace with your sin and just domesticate your sin 
and continue to live in it, but that's not what God wants. Every time you fall and you get up, you're indicating that you have faith. Mm -hmm. Faith in the redemptive power and the blood of Jesus Christ. And faith in your own deliverance, knowing that you have been delivered. Yes, you're not perfect. Nobody is perfect. But the fact that you continue to get up and continue to move forward is a sign that you're not the same person anymore. Because if you were the same person, trust me, you would fall back into that lifestyle or into that scene or into whatever it was. And you would stay there happily without feeling, you know, anything is wrong. You would be rolling around in the mud with pigs and be very comfortable in that. But by getting up and walking right back, moving forward, you're signaling that I am moving forward to Jesus Christ. My eyes are fixed on, fixed on Jesus, no matter what is going on around me. And I'm going to make it. It's just like a baby when a baby starts to walk. And eventually, you will be able to defeat that situation by continuing to walk and move forward with your eyes focused on Christ. Just like a baby. Eventually, that baby, after getting up, falling and getting up a thousand times, eventually that baby is going to get up, walk, and not fall. That's how we all learned how to walk. And so, eventually, that's how you will defeat your situation so the chains have been broken walk in faith knowing that the chains have been broken but whenever the enemy comes and whispers things in your ear or uses people to remind you of your past and try to reel you back in by actually pronouncing those word curses upon you by saying oh you haven't changed you're still the same that's a curse you have to say internally no I reject that word curse and I cancel it and render it powerless in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what you need to do, you know? So it's important for us to continue to confess our sins to God because, for example, if you, because that's what sets us free. So if you, for example, um, stole some goods from your office, right? You stole a couple of reams of paper and stationery and an employee at your job saw you do that and they confronted you about it. Now you're always going to be living in fear and feeling beholden to that person who saw you. So this person could blackmail you for God knows what, knowing full well that, and you would always be acquiescing to them because this was something that was done in the dark. And so this person has power over you because they're holding something on you. And so, you know, they could blackmail you and get you to do all sorts of things. And because you know that if you got reported, you would lose your job, the fear of losing your job would make you do even worse things or acquiesce to this other individual because they have power over you and they will tell. And if they snitch, you're out of a job. But what would happen if one day you decide, you know what, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of feeling like somebody else has power over me and somebody else is manipulating me. What if you walked up to the boss one day, you're tired and you say, you know what, boss, I just want to confess to you. I want to let you know that I'm sorry because I, I stole from the office. I took rooms of paper and here I am. I understand you might fire me and all of this, but I just feel the need to to confess before you what I did. And your boss, being gracious and kind, says, well, I'm not so many people would come and confess what they did. You're free to go, but just make sure you're free to go. I hold nothing against you. I forgive you. You won't lose your job. But just make sure that you don't steal anymore. That's pretty much you've been given a pass. You're going to feel lighter. You're going to feel no guilt. You're going to feel loose, loosened from this situation and from the fear that was binding you. So now this other employee comes back one time and he, he's not aware of that and says, hey, I need you to do this and this and this for me or else I'm going to go tell the boss what you did. But guess what? You've already confessed your sin before your boss. Your boss has already forgiven you. So now when this person comes and, and tries to hold that same thing over you, that thing has already lost its power because now it's in the light. 
now you've been forgiven the truth is in the open that's what happens between us and satan he holds our sins against us he holds our past deeds against us and he will use people to reinforce those things if need be okay so unconfessed sin actually is really um a powerful deterrent to our walk in christ but once you've been discharged not because you're righteous but because of the blood of jesus christ sin has no more power over you satan has no more power over you the only reason you are still living in fear and doubt is because you don't understand the redemptive power of the blood of jesus you don't understand that once you were forgiven your sins were forgiven and your past is your past all you need to do is to continue to walk forward with your eyes on jesus and allow the holy spirit to cleanse you and to sanctify you so um that is you know one that was the one example i wanted to bring to kind of give you an idea about what might be happening so i hope that you will reject all negative thoughts i hope that you will reject all negative word curses that come out of the mouths of people and i pray that you will be able to resist <clears throat> The things that you have been praying for so if you've been praying against spirit spouses um, and dream pollution and this continues to happen what needs to happen is when you wake up just continue to cancel and render those dreams powerless in the much less name of Jesus when you still feel the urge to do the things you, you, you used to do that you've been seeking deliverance from you need to counter those urges with doing something different. Go and spend some time just praising and worshiping God. I found that that really helps me a lot. Um, you know, when someone does something that upsets me and I don't want to wallow in those feelings of being upset, then what I do is just turn on my music, listen to the listen to worship, and just begin to praise God. And quickly enough, you know, that seems to help me. So replace whatever that urge is with something that you could be doing for god either through prayer praise worship or just pray and confess honestly to god i still have this urge oh lord but holy spirit come right now sit with me be with me in this space and help me to overcome whatever it is that it is your true your battling and you will see victory so today i would like you to focus on thanking God for your deliverance, spending time in praise and worship, and also focus on uh, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, which says that if we confess our sins before God, He is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So today we will focus on um, John 14, 30. We will also focus on Proverbs 28, verses 13. And we are going to revisit Psalms 19, verses 12 to 14, where King David also did pray and ask God to forgive him for the sins that he didn't even know that he had committed. I love you guys. I will be making, um, I feel the need to actually make a really, a video on my experiences during this three-day fast. So do look out for it sometime this week. Not sure when I'll be posting that. I love you. I am so glad we got to do this. I pray that you will walk in your deliverance and don't give up no matter what it is you feel. Understand that your feelings have zero credence as far as your walk with God is concerned. Your faith in God is everything. So you have to see yourself being what you want to be. You have to see yourself and believe yourself to be free even when everything around you tells you that you're not free that is faith for faith calls forth the things that were not as if they were and then they become so we have to see it in the spiritual first before it manifests in the physical sometimes and so that means that you really have to continue to rejoice and give god all the glory for everything for your deliverance and for your freedom even when the circumstances around you at this very present moment says the exact opposite. 
Shalom, brothers and sisters, and I'll talk to you soon. May the light and the love of God be with you always. Shalom.